we're gonna welcome to the stage the CEO of one of the 50 largest construction companies in the United States. Welcome to the stage, please, David Layton. See ya. Uh, you throw a nice party, Josh. Yeah, we're throwing a little party, you know. You do it Dave. right. Look at these chairs. I mean, I'm a Dave, uh, chair, metal chair guy. These are you don't, great. You don't look like a construction guy. I'm the construction guy. I've never sat in a chair like this. This is, is this tech? I've never sat. Like, <laughs> I like tech. Tech's this fun, is, bro. This is good, yeah. You, I was, last time I was talking to you, you were saying, uh, give, give us your, your, your pitch about tech and disrupting? Well, I, you know, as a contractor, we are a middleman, right? And technology's been really hard on the middleman. And so I think a lot about, okay, what is going to disrupt my business? What's going to disrupt my industry? Because I've got my customer and I've got my subcontractors. We're the guys in the middle that have to put that all together. So I know we're vulnerable but I still haven't figured out how we get disrupted. I think, uh, I think a lot about the experience because we're trying to provide a better experience with our customer than our industry is known for. And if anybody's built anything, you know that our industry is not really good at delivering customer uh, satisfaction. So we're trying to go beyond and do it better. Yeah, I lamented with Dave. He's like, have you ever built anything? Yes. <laughs> was it overcost? Yes. <laughs> was late. It, was it late? <laughs> yes. Um, Did you know what was going on? Yeah, no clue. Oh. <laughs> no clue. Tell us a little bit about your business and, and uh, about your experience with Domo. So we're a, we're a construction firm working in uh, 23, 25 states around the country, primarily in the West. Well, actually, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. This is, the, I, I've, I've spoken to a lot of CEOs that use their product. I don't know if I've spoken to as many that are as adept as David. So you gotta, are you gonna do the, yeah, we'll the show, little show you for us? We'll show you a little bit. Because you're bit talking about, about where you're doing. at, and I, I've seen that you show me the. Yeah, I can show you that. Um, this, is, this is great stuff. You gotta get the mirroring turned on. There we go. Okay, you're up. All right, so. You're live. Let's go to... Don't give away all your competitive information. No, no, no. I'll, 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, there goes all there's my enterprise There's your revenue, your profits. Stuff. Okay, there it is. So here's our... Yeah, we're going to not stop on all that. <laughs> so, you know, this bottom card right here, active jobs, 172 active jobs. It's a heat, heat map of where we are. Um, revenue by state, year to date. You can see, you know, we're based here in Utah, so home base, we do a lot of work here. The West is really busy. Arizona's really um, oh, it's come hard. alive, yeah. And um, we're 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 just using this to know kind of where we gotta be hiring and deploying more resource because when we're sailing downwind, we've got to support that uh, that effort and and make it while we can. So. So what are some of the big projects that you have in these different? Uh, do you want to demo any anything else before and then you can turn it off so we don't. Uh give away all your Well, he, info. He, here's what I was going to show. I wanted to show you how I can kind of drill down. So safety is a huge deal with us. We're working um, between our forces and our subcontractors. We're working uh, 10 to 15 million hours a year. And we're talking about big hospitals, hospitals, resorts, huge warehouses. Th these are, uh, well, and I mean, we do small work too. We do tenant finish work. Um, typically in occupied buildings. I mean, we have a lot of risk, so safety's a, safety's a big deal to us. Um, I use this, uh, this card a lot. I can, I can drill down into my safety incidents. And so, you know, we start getting into bad weather and slips and falls are a big deal to us because it kind of comes with the bad weather. And you can look on this card, whereas we got into October and November, we started seeing our... Uh, our slips emerge as, as a trend. And so we really put an effort into managing at the job site, making sure we were taking care of ice, slippery conditions, so on and so forth. You can see in February, right here, I mean, this is live TV, folks, drill down. 
We had 10 slips in February. Not good. We want to know what happened because our trend was really good. Come on, I want to drill. There we go. Let me just expand this a little. There we go. A little harder on the phone than the computer. He knows, he knows all the little tricks. When, when I saw Dave know that he had to click once to put it into interactive mode and then click again, which is the most annoying thing in our app, but he knew that. I was like, all right, he knows what he's doing. And that's going away this year, right, Darren? Catherine, somebody in front? Yeah? It's going away. So, so I can drill all the way down right here. I can see the date. I can see which business unit this occurred in, the project. And I can find out um, who was involved. And so it's giving us, um, it's giving us information about what happened, who was involved, and we can go in and add management and, and, and turn that corner. Um, I had a subcontractor in that slip category that had two in one month. Well, we'll go right to them and say, look, we've got a bad trend. We've got to change this because it's not acceptable. Yeah, you were saying now, we know who, now we know who to go manage instead of you know, guessing. It's, it's right here in front of us. We can manage it. And so what about the uh, Amazon story? That was one. That was a, but this was, I, I've never, I've, you never heard me tell this story. I've told this story about you. I was at a wedding, and I didn't know Jeff Dave. Jeff Curl's wedding, I didn't, Stan I didn't, Socks. I didn't know Dave yet, and uh, I might have told this last year at Double Palooza, in fact. And I was at this wedding, and there was a bathroom line, and there's a guy in the bathroom line smiling at me. I'm like, who is this guy? I go to the bathroom, I come out, he's still in line, and he's smiling at me. I'm like, and then about five minutes later, he comes over, he's like, Dave Layton, I'm your big customer. I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. So that's why I met Dave. But uh, I thought it was so fascinating at that time. That's what you said to me. Like, I, you got to hear these stories. I got to tell you about Amazon. So tell us that story, a crazy story. Yeah, we, um, we met with them. They're, as folks know, they've been building warehouses all over the country. These are, these are big projects in a short period of time, you know, about two and a half million square feet in 12 months. Wow. There, there's, there's no room for error. Um, Huge risk to deliver uh, a predictable outcome for them. In our, in our meetings with them, we showed them how we could use the Domo dashboard to provide a level of transparency they weren't familiar with at the contractor level. Because again, when you're dealing with your contractor, typically it's this huge mystery. Yeah. We, um, we could drive data out of our estimating system into a dashboard and, and populate it with all of the significant production that we would be tracking on the job site. So for instance, one of the first efforts um, is to build a huge dirt pad that the project sits on. We had 17 days to move a million yards of soil. Wow. We worked around the clock to do that. And we could, we could track every truckload of soil that came to that job site, and so could our client. Then it moves into slab on grade, footings, foundations, pipe in the ground, wall panels, structural steel, roof. They could see all of it real time. And when we fell behind, obviously we get the alerts. We now know what we've got to do to go manage that production because we don't have a lot of chance to fall behind and catch back up. There's not slack in the schedule. So we jump on it immediately, we change that trend, and we get caught back up. And our client really appreciated the fact that they could see all this exactly when we were seeing it, rather than find out days or even weeks later that we were way behind schedule and hadn't done anything about it. And that led to more? Led to more work with them, yeah. Led to more they, Amazon they loved, contracts. Um, I mean, they're a, they're a tech company. They're very I told advanced. Dave I have a recurring revenue business. He said, so do I. I get repeat <laughs> business. <laughs> Yep. Um, in our business, you've, you, you've got to deliver so that you can have that next, next opportunity to build. And then what about uh, the, um, there was a couple other things you, t you mentioned. The, I think the biggest one was the, what was that, the unbuild, what did you call them? Oh, our underbillings. Underbillings, there it is, yeah. Yeah, so the, the way our industry works is um, we'll work for a month, we'll collect all of that uh, cost data, and then we'll submit it to our client who then has another month to review it and, and make a payment. 
So we're 60 days right there to the last dollar. And um, this, is a, this is a part of our business we really have to manage because these are huge bills. And in many cases, between our firm and our subcontractors, that's already cash that's gone out the door to pay our labor, pay, pay our suppliers. So if we're not managing that, that payment process, our cash flows upside down. So historically, we had an issue of whether or not our billing internally to our personnel, this our project team. Natural to the whole construction industry, right? Exactly, yeah. Everybody goes through this every month. Um, our issue was monthly getting those bills in on time, making sure they were complete so that the client had their 30 days to review it. Well, without Domo, there were a lot of places you could hide in our systems. And often we ended up with a dilemma of whether or not the bill had been submitted accurately or not. Now with the dashboard real time, it's clear where that bill is. And, and if it's lagging, we can jump in, provide some management, and, and get that moving forward so we get it to the client. So I was talking to a, a, a member of the, the Treasury, the United States Treasury, and he was asking me the question, there's a lot of money that's been made in tech, Facebook and these other you know, consumer companies and billions of dollars of wealth's been created, but we haven't seen the productivity increases in, in business with the advent of the internet. The productivity increases aren't there. Are they coming? And it's conversations like this where I'm like, yes. Yeah. They're coming in a very meaningful way. But I, I thought it was really fascinating uh, yesterday when you were telling me about your approach when you guys are pulling up to a job site. You know, these are half billion dollar job sites. And now you know where to go. Tell me a little bit about the way that's changed how you run your business and manage your business. Well, yeah, 20, 30 years ago, you'd go to the job site and you'd have to use your experience, your eyes, your ears, your senses to try to get a, a, an image of what was going on on the project. Now we've got a dashboard populated with the key metrics and, and we can just pull that up whether we're headed to a job site or traveling, we can stay in touch. When we get to that job site, we know where we need to spend our time and we also know what's going well. And we can, we can identify individuals on our project team and say, boy, good job. You know, you're, you're, you're under budget, you're ahead of schedule. Yeah, you said you're whether it's like the right things. moving dirt or number of pallets of bricks that have come, have been installed. Yeah. And you, I can, one story was you got pissed off at a mason and then found out he was using bigger bricks. So you're like, he, was actually, he was actually on track but it forced the conversation? It did. He was, it, it looked like he was falling behind because we were tracking uh, numbers of units, but they were, bigger, they were bigger units, so we were knocking out more square footage than, than we thought. So, or you said architecture is, is ar architects as well? That was a fascinating one about answering questions, how quickly they answer questions. Yeah, so on our projects, there, there is a, just a tremendous amount of data that has to get processed by all the participants in the project. So you've got the design professionals that are creating the plans, the specifications, and then we get into a, a stage of the project which is called submittals where we take all of that and we actually submit specific product data that they review and approve or reject, and then that's finally what we end up installing. Um, if we don't get those approvals timely, then we can't go back to our vendors and order and get it shipped and get it ready to be installed. Yeah. So historically, we've, we've struggled with getting reviews and approvals. Well, guess what? Now we have a dashboard that's really clear. You said this data is lo was locked in another system. What's it called? C C CMIC. CMIC, which everyone in construction uses. All the data is locked in there. But now, by pulling it into Domo... It's, it, it's on a spreadsheet. Um, it's hard to find. And then you say... It, the, you can go looking for you it. Called the, you called the guy to the mat, right? He <laughs> said, no, we're, we're answering all the questions. Uh, no, you're not, actually. Here's how fast you're answering them all. The, the, uh, in the particular example, we, we just had design professionals that were overwhelmed. They were falling behind in their review and approvals, which ultimately is going to lead to a delay in the schedule. And so we could, 
we could get together, have a meeting, show our clients, show them, and ultimately they just had to commit more resource to look through that. But, but we prevented what would have inevitably been a delay on the construction site because we just didn't get those approvals soon enough to get ordered and get those materials delivered. So last question here before we wrap up. Um, I thought your, your vision for the future was really fascinating. I think you should share that. You're, you're clearly, a par only the paranoid survive, uh, <laughs> but clearly paranoid and think about how technology can help make sure that you're not some middleman, you're providing a service that they can't get elsewhere, but your comment about drones and what that may, how the future may end up uh, unveiling here. Well, again, for us, it's, um, if, if we're tracking productivity, it's all about how do we collect the data that, that demonstrates what we got done in a certain day. And, and some of the advancement that's underway is um, actually being able to fly a drone through our project and scan uh, the day's work, rationalize all that into data, push it into your warehouse and have it pop up on a, on a dashboard and we can see exactly what the productivity was for a, for a given day. So that's, that's out there, but um, I know I've got a lot of guys in my, my organization that would love to see that drone just fly through and pick up all that data and, and, and save them time. We could put them on uh, other assignments. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, really appreciate you. I know you had to move a couple of things, but really appreciate you being here. Glad to be here. Thanks. Let's give it up for Thanks Dave Thanks for Layton. what you're doing. Really appreciate it. Love you, Thank you so much.